What's up with you guys? It is your boy, West Coast Cowboy, and we live in the building, man. How is everybody doing? How is everybody doing, man? It is your brethren. We is live in the building. This is a new show, new content, man, and I'm extremely, extremely excited to bring a new content creator to the nation, man. I'm about to come up, run over here and open my door because it keeps open back and forth. But while I do that, man, I want to let, I'm going to go ahead and let Miss let them know who you is and what you're going by. I'm gonna let you be the first one to say it on air. Go ahead. I be tearing it up. <laughs> there we go. Hey, go ahead and say it. Hold on, let me go open this this thing. Tearing it up. So up my name is Taryn. You can find me on all social medias as Tearing It Up at Cowboys. I am new to the content side of the Dallas Cowboys, but I am a lifelong diehard Cowboys fan. Ride or die for my boys, good, bad, everything. Um, so I'm excited to be here. My most memorable Cowboys moment, and I was, hey, I was literally listen to me. I was because you said ride or die, right? So I was like, ride or die. I was like, okay, if you riding or dying, then I need to know when was the last time you rid, and I need to know the last time you died. So, so I want to know right now before you go ahead, tell me, tell me. When was the last time you arrived for this cowboy? When was a good when was a good cowboy moment, real quick? And actually, while you think about that, let me do something real quick because I'm tripping. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me open the doors to the church so everybody can come into the building. Hey man, you guys already know when you guys come up in here, there's two things you guys must do. Technically, three things you guys gotta do. First thing I need you to do is I need you guys to hit that share button aggressively we have we have pages connected up on here we have youtube's connected on here we got facebook's connected on here i need you guys to hit those um hit that share button aggressively hit that um that share button aggressively next thing i need you to do and listen to me you can tell miss tearing it up is new because listen she ain't even put her cash app look at it mm -hmm. yeah, look at this Look at this. Just look at it. I need everybody to just look at it and just shake your, shake your head and just say, newbie. Mm, mm, mm. God damn. Rookie. Rookie. <laughs> Goddamn rookie. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, I need y'all to hit that cash. I need y'all. I got my cash app up there. She'll have hers up inside in the, uh, in the comment box at some point. I need you guys to bless that cash app. Why? Because you guys understand, man, that everybody that's on these contents, man, we are either at work or we sneaking off work to come bring y'all some content because we believe this is our work. So we need y'all to make sure y'all hit that share button, hit that cash app button, hit that support button. You know, feel me? And then the last thing I need you guys to do, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, no matter where you're watching at, I need you guys to hit that super chat button and I need you guys to hit that share button. Make sure you guys hit that share button. Make sure you guys hit that share button. Make sure you hit that share button. Now, before I turn it over to Miss Tearing It Up and we go on to this cowboy content, I'm going to tell y'all, my fellas, my fellas, my fellas, I'm going to tell y'all this right now. Don't let the beanie and the hair and the nose and the eye, don't let that fool you. You come up here saying some crazy stuff. I'm going to just let her up. I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to let her show you that she knows she knows what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Don't let West Coast have to. I'm, I'm gonna just let her show you that she know what she's talking about because you know we don't play that oh you know football you know a lot of football for a girl we don't play that over here you know what I'm talking about we don't play that over here this is a co-ed sport over here you know what I'm saying so Miss tearing it up introduction to the nation I want to know real quick man when's the last time you rode man when's the last when's the last tell me about your best cowboy experience one of your most memorable cowboy experience most memorable cowboy experience i would say my most ride or die cowboys moment was back when it was tony romo was hurt dak prescott came in we was like oh wait a minute who's dak prescott hold on and then romo was coming back and it was the big debate and the heated do we go with Romo? Do we go with Dak? What do we do? And I felt so passionate and I felt like they need to know what I feel on this. And so I sat down and I wrote Jerry Jones a three page handwritten letter. I was, I was engaged at the time. My fiance came home and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm writing Jerry Jones because he needs to know what we need to do. And he looked at me and he goes, Terrence. Darren, you know Jerry? And I was like, no, trust me, he's going to get this. Leave me alone. I sat, I wrote this three-page letter out. 
I ended up getting a magazine back and a generic thank you for your letter type of thing from him. But that was my ultimate, like, not nah, these are my boys. And this is what we need to do <laughs> moment where I was like, I'm a real okay. one. <laughs> okay. So that's the, that's the time the Cowboys put a smile on your face. It's a yin and yang in this world. I need to know when the last time Jerry Jones made them eyes puff up. Oh and turn God, to yourself. Daily. Turn to yourself and go. <laughs> when was the last time the Cowboys had your ass like that? Under the road by boys to men. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your most. The last time these Cowboys put some tears in your eyes, man. Tell me. Okay, well, like real tears, <laughs> deep tears. The last playoffs. I'm not gonna lie, that one hurt. I went into the playoffs. <laughs> I thought we were so solid. I thought we had the healthiest team we had had in years. You know, injuries have always gotten us. Injuries have always in one way or another held us back. And I just felt like, and you know what? Dak Prescott had the most solid season I have seen Dak Prescott play. And I just felt like, oh my God, we're at least making it to, you know, I thought we were going to the Super Bowl, but I thought we was at least going to make it through to the divisional. And I was, I was that, um, you know, and I had people tell me, hey, you know, watch out for Jordan Love. Don't sleep on him. And I was out here running my mouth that no, Green Bay is a JV team. Jordan Love, <laughs> you ain't got the experience. I was, and I just got so stopped in my tracks. And it was like, I mean, that one hurt. That I, I really did cry. I, there was, because it was like, it's done. Yeah. We, yeah, man. But then really, and with the off season and everything going on in the free agency, I still be crying every day over Jerry Jones. And he's so, you know, it's kind of become part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, we have over 150 people in here watching, man. They all watching. I got a bunch of eyeballs in here. Yeah. And I thought, listen, I told her this morning when we was about to go live, I said, we about to Kendrick Lamar, the whole nation, man. What does that mean? That means step into the club if you like that. We like that. You know what I'm saying? We putting the whole world on nation. You know what I'm saying? On, hey. on nothing. That so now that, you love. Absolutely. So listen to me. You come to my house one time. I'm going to get you. If you need a drink, I got you. Uh, you need to know where stuff is. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll guess. You know what I'm saying? After the day, you ain't no guess. Get your own water. Get your, <laughs> you know where the refrigerator is. You see the door right there. You can make it make sense. Make a left. The bathroom's to the right. You know what I'm saying? So you a guest today. So I'm going to give you all the love a guest is supposed to get. I might not even cut you off. Whoa. 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 Hold on. I know, right? Let's, 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 let's calm down, West Coast. Calm down. I might actually let her talk. So, you know what I'm saying? But I want to know, man, what is on your heart? Why are you up at 11 o'clock in the morning on the phone talking to 150 people about Cowboy Talk? What the hell is on your mind, girl? Talk you to know, me. Right now, there's a lot on my mind. And Dak oh, Lord, Prescott, I didn't ask the woman. And everything I didn't ask going on with Dak Prescott has made me do a lot of soul searching. And I have really dug of how do I feel on this situation? Because this coming year, and then what we do after this, like, I really thought Dak was going to be with us forever. I, I felt like Dak was going to be our quarterback until Dak was done. And unless there was some type of major injury with Dak, I thought we was going to do another contract with him, lock him down. We haven't done anything. We haven't moved. We haven't moved on any of the big contracts that we could have moved around money to do something in the free agency. I feel like every year we go into wanting to. OK, so this is what's really been bothering me every uh -oh. year. Uh oh. Uh oh, here it comes because I'm. Hey, you know what? Listen to me. I made the listen. I either made the mistake or had the great idea to ask a woman on a phone what's bothering you. So I'm just There's gonna. Cross, hold on. Where do I begin? <laughs> I'm gonna cross my leg. Get comfortable. Go ahead, man. <laughs> no. Okay. So the Dallas Cowboys. If you look at our off season and what we do in the free agency. It's not surprising we're not making moves. We don't ever make moves in the free agency. Here's my thoughts. We have an amazing team in the regular season. We dominate. We we them boys, right? Our struggle is postseason, championship. You know, obviously we have a winning culture, and I hate that they've even questioned that. Yeah, we have a winning culture. We need a championship culture. And part of me thinks if we're depending on the draft every year and we're bringing in newbies, 
yeah, that's dope. They good in the regular season. But let's bring in some veterans, especially when we have a huge open position in the running back game. Let's bring in veterans because, you know what, that experience to me, I think that's what sets teams apart in the playoffs. That veteran experience is what is going to set you apart. And, you know, I just feel like if it hasn't worked all these other years, why are we doing the same shit over? You know, and that's where I get frustrated with the Jones and their decisions. Because I don't want to just be a good team throughout the year. That Yeah, it's fun. We celebrate. We party. But I want that ring, baby. I want that championship. I want that number six. And I want to be able to throw it in the 49ers' face and be like, we got six before you. Now what? You know? And, so, and, and, and I'm going to tell you this right here. People don't part. understand that. Like, people don't understand that, like, living in California – that is like it may be something small to people outside of the California, but bro, this is something we deal with every day. You know what I'm saying? 49er fans literally walk around the state of California as if they had a full stadiums five years ago. Like, let's just be real. 49er fans are not like they are the they are not faithful. They are not faithful. And it irritates us because when they're not a winning team, you don't hear nothing about the 49ers, bro. You don't hear nothing about them. State that stadium in Santa Clara is empty. You know what I'm saying? It's been full here lately because they were winning, but they're not faithful. They're not the Dallas Cowboys. But you hear it, man. And they talk. I'm going to be honest with you. Cowboys run the state of California. We run the state of California. But the 49ers, by presidents, they do have a presence in California. So, I mean, you you will you know, come game day. You're going to run into some 49er fans, and they are very vocal. They are very vocal. And well, it's my crazy. life has always been surrounded by 49er fans. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, I mean, what are your, what are your, I mean, what Cowboys have decided, well, they, the, the Joneses have decided to, that they're not going to extend Dak Prescott. And my so thing is let this. Let me ask you this. Shoot. You know, we hear it's a mutual agreement. Well, a mutual agreement can go a lot of different fucking ways. You know, right. You can break up with someone and we mutually agreed to break up, but there could be a lot of shit behind that mutual agreement. <laughs> so, what's your mutual agreement here? You know, because we have heard nothing from Dak and it's driving me nuts. It's driving me. I just need a fucking statement. <clears throat> like Dak, just call me and tell me, just let me know. I mean, I'm going to run my mouth and tell the whole nation, but like, I just need to know, like, <laughs> And I need to know what's behind this mutual agreement. And that's where I get frustrated because there's no word of it. Jerry's very, I always say they're very corporate America on it. You know, very what the public PC. Yeah, we're, of course, we're building in the off season. <laughs> hey, and think about this, right? I said the same thing on a show a couple, hey, shout out to my boy, Tony, Tony Tommy Montoya uh, with the $20 super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, Miss Tar Miss Miss Tar turning up. I'm gonna need you to drop your your cash up in the comment box. Text as tech. Matter of fact, text it to me on this phone right here. I don't need really do cash up stuff. I don't need yeah. cash up stuff. Just go <laughs> follow the social medias. <sighs> Listen to me. <laughs> we gonna have a long talk after we get off this. But, I'm about but, to get scolded. <laughs> hey, but listen. But until now, hey, do what she asks, please. Do what she asks. That's what she. That's what she wants you to do. Do what she asks. She's asking that you guys. Hit the follow, go follow her on her social platform. So her flap tearing it up. That's on. You know, that's I on. just made my YouTube. I go on Instagram and follow me because that's where I have a lot. But my YouTube and everything is new. So do that instead of a cash app. <laughs> For hey. now, until I get scolded after this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do it. Yes. But hey, man, listen, listen. I said, I've said this, I've been saying the same exact thing like that, bro. Every time in life where I've heard players come to a standstill with negotiation there's a time of well i ain't coming to work then right now Dak has a because of the way his deal is set up he does have a, a stipulation in his contract where it says he can't miss a certain amount of games and if he miss a certain amount of games then he is tied to the dallas cowboys in 2025 right well I'm the type of person I like being, listen to me, when I was growing up, I got better credit now because I understood that paying your bills on time helped your credit. I didn't know that. I was one of them dudes when my bills was doing the third, I'm sending it on the third. You know what I'm saying? So Dak Prescott, if they telling me, bro, you know, legally I got to do this or I, I only got to play X amount of games, I'm going to start vocalizing right now what I'm going to do. 
Why? Because I'm going to use the same ignorance that the Joneses use on the nation and let them believe that, may I might not come to practice because that's what people who really want to be here do, bro. You'd yeah. be like, no, I'm not signing no divorce papers. You can sign them yourself. You gonna have to divorce yourself because I ain't signing them. Yeah. That's what people who want to be together do. Dak, why are you re why are you like, OK, I'll sign them. I ain't tripping. That's what's scaring me, bro. I want to know who's behind there and being no deal, though. I want to, know, you know, because we know it's not really a weighted. It ain't an equal scale. It ain't so never no equal mutual. Raise your hand if you ever had a relationship that was mutually. Yeah. Hey, take, listen to me. Hey, raise your hand if you ever had a relationship where you was mutually agreed that we were best not to be with each other. I mean, in the exactly. end, yeah. <laughs> when everything made sense and was said and done. Like a year later when I got closure. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, God, you was right. Hey, no, real quick. Listen, you brought up another subject because, listen, we can get on Dak all day. I do need in, in, in closing when it comes to Dak Prescott, I do need I do need something. I would like to get something from Dak. But you know what's so crazy? Dak, the Zeeks, these great players, they are not going to use social media to get leverage back they're going to try to play the game straight up and it's just amazing that you find guys because i'm gonna tell you this right now i love micah parsons but just to talk about micah parsons for a couple minutes i don't believe that the dallas cowboys are gonna have such good conversation with a guy like micah parsons who has shown to be very open about everything that he believes whether it be good positive or bad you know what I'm but saying? That's why I love Micah Parsons. And as a fan, that's where it's like Micah Parsons. Finally, someone is giving us some inside information and we are getting to see, you know, because you can watch the game and you can analyze all you want, but you don't really know unless you know what's going on in that locker room and behind the scenes. And it's just like in life, you know, people can make things look all they want. We them Dallas Cowboys, we America's team on the outside. But what's going on in that locker room? And that's where I have loved Micah. I loved Micah and CD sitting down and having their conversation and hearing CD say, hey, you know what? I know what my mama posted. I loved hearing him address that and give us those answers of, hey, I know what my mama posted. That ain't a reflection of me. That's just a mama that loves her baby. And she said what she said. And she is a passionate woman. You know what I mean? But that's not reflective of me. I love Dak. Dak is my boy. To me, as a fan, that gives me answers. That gives me insight that I want. You know, like, that's why with the Kelsey brothers, I love listening to their podcast because I love hearing, like, NFL players currently in it talking about it. I think it gives us a whole new insight that if the Dallas Cowboys used it to their advantage and were smart because we're America's team, everyone wants to know what's going on in that organization. We could use that so smart. We could use that so smart to our advantage, but then it takes away from Jerry Jones. You know what I mean? Because then it's them out doing it, them out making a name, not Jerry. So, what are your thoughts on CD Lamb's? What are your thoughts on CD Lamb? Because CD Lamb currently, right now, is you know it's funny because every I think if CD Lamb is being so quiet that almost everybody in the world has forgot that he is on a contract for seventeen games. You have CD Lamb for 17 games. I don't even want to say a year. You have CD contractually for 17 games. That's it. And, CD and think about one, this. The I Cowboys think we should have, have locked down. We should have locked down a contract with him by now. We That's one and a CD Lamb you keep. We want CD. We want to make sure we make it known CD's ours. But we ain't done it. And because... And now this is where I am still learning all the contract and stuff. But if we would have given CD a contract, that would have moved around money to free up for us to make moves this free agency, where it's like, why are we not doing that? What when we know we want CD? He's that's where it don't make sense. And think about this. My question, I got a I got a real question to throw at you. <clears throat> You're CD Lamb. You're 88. If your boy who's throwing you the ball don't know if he's going to be here, remember, you ain't tearing it up right now. Give me one of these real quick. <laughs>
Give me one. Just give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Come on. First down. Give me one. Bert, you got to hit it. Come on now. Come on. Don't come on. Don't disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, hey, y'all know what it thank you. You know what that means. When they, you know what it just got nasty right now. You know what I'm saying? I want to know. Um, your CD, if your boy don't sign, does that affect what you do, how you feel? Because right now, you only have Dak throwing the football to you for 17 games. They want you to sign for like what's 17 times five? Let's see what that is. Let's see what that is. Let's see what that is. But what does CD know about Trey Lance behind the scenes? Like my thing is like so they want you to sign like, for 85 I, games. You know you only got a good quarterback throwing the ball to you for 17. But does he believe in Trey Lance? Well, my thing is this. Because Whenever is Trey Lance I, gonna be our quarterback point. if we lose Dak, you think that's obviously we ain't gonna try and go get someone else? Say it again. Okay, so if Dak leaves next year, you think Trey Lance is going to be our number one or you think Jerry's going to go crazy and try and bring in someone else? You know what's crazy to me? I think it's crazy that everybody feels remembers that Trey Lance is the third quarterback. So before Trey Lance can go to like it's you know what's crazy? And it just shows you the, the stupidity in Dallas that we already know that Cooper Rush is not going to be no starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. But the Cowboys still have him as your number two, paying him. Like that's the like, we, like, like. Let's not even talk about. Yeah, let's just talk about that stupidity. Stupid, and they need like. Put, I feel like I could sort this shit out and make more sense of it than the Cowboys. Have. Like right you now, you got, the more I dig in and the more I learn, I'm like, what are we doing? You guys don't even make sense. Like, like ab absolutely. So hey, that's a good. That I think that's a good point. I mean. Everything that I see as far as after workouts and things like that, you see Dak and CD Lamb. So it's like Dak, CD. I, I mean, if I'm CD Lamb right now, yeah, if there's if I'm CD Lamb, as many touchdowns, as many um, receptions. Also, you have the longest reception in Cowboy history, the second longest reception in NFL history. You have a jersey of football helmet cleats that are all at the Smithsonian because of a pass you caught from number four. Him trying to evade a sack from the right hand side because we know our right tackle didn't have a good game that day. <laughs> yeah. So shout out to my right tackle for missing that block because if he didn't miss that block, that play never happens. Um, but you have all that. You got an NFL award because of that, because of four. I just don't see how CD could. Ha I mean, I'm pretty sure he got faith in Trey Lance, but there's just no way well, that I can lock them both down. Facts. Keep but, my question, like, but my question is back to you, though. My question back to you, though, if you're CD Lamb, does this contract stuff with Dak affect you? Is this a are you taking in this in consideration? Are you filtering in this into your decision now? Because CD ain't said nothing. We ain't heard. We haven't even heard the Joneses say anything about CD Lamb. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, CD. I I'm mean, talking. What to if you Dak right and CD go somewhere else and just ball the fuck out next year? And I don't like, want to hear that, girl. Don't want to hear that. Come on, Jen. Don't make fun of that. Heart would shatter in a million pieces. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna tell you. I mean, CD Lamb is Tom Brady and Gronk. Oh my God! And they just went to some random ass team because the Bucks was nobody, and then they. Okay, we're not going. There. See, but this is the type of heartbreak I go through daily and go through my head on this stuff. Like, hey, think about this. Since it's and the crazy thing about it is, since they're both on one year deals, it's a legitimate. It's a legitimate thought. It's not. It's it's nothing without without realm. And my question is this, CD. Lamb right now is going to make $18 million this year. He's going to make 17.9999 something and 83 cents. 83 cents is dope. I said, hey, getting this. Get your money, boy. <laughs> he wanted 83 cents. Right. So he made, I rounded it up. He's going to make 18 million. So if anybody is talking about CD Lamb's going to be a $20 million receiver, bro, he's not going to freaking sign a contract for a $2 million raise, right? CD Lamb is going to be a $30 million a year receiver. You know what I'm saying? At least 28. At least 28. Now, the Cowboys, they can definitely franchise tag him, but then you're on a one-year deal again. If if I'm CeeDee Lamb, like, there's this year to year. No. No. 
No. And you know what? You know what makes me mad is all the people out here saying, well, Dak ain't, no one wants Dak. No other, do you know how many teams will jump on Dak Prescott? You know how many, like, that's one thing where it's like, you guys aren't even being real. Like, for some reason, people want to put down Dak because he ain't won a Super Bowl and because our playoffs have been so sketchy. But there are teams that are going to chew him up and the same with CD. And that's where, again, Jerry, why are you not locking these fools down? Like, if I know I want you, I know you dope, you riding, you my team I want. Like, I'm doing everything to secure that and make sure, like, we good, we solid, we doing this. And I just feel like Jerry's like, yeah, it's a great problem we have next year. Hey, shout out to that ex that said, you ain't going to find nobody that's going to do you like me. You be looking at him like, you know what? You know, hey, And you be looking at him like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of which, speaking about exes, you know what I'm saying? Because all my exes live in they Texas. In Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen to me, man. You got an ex named Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Oh. Got a miss. Hey, Ooh. hold up. Got, hold up. Do we got Miss Price in the building? Shout out to Miss Price, the Cowboys' number one fan in the building. How are you doing, girl? I'm about to put this down for a minute. How are you doing today? I see you. How are you doing, girl? I see you. Appreciate you for tapping in. It is always love. Dallas Cowboy. If you Google Dallas Cowboy number one fan, you're going to see a picture of Miss Price screaming at DeMarcus Ware like this. <laughs> so we appreciate you for sliding in. It's your boy, West Coast. I got tearing it up, Cowboys, man. You know, hey, my goal is to have a thousand bloggers. Why? Because we need voices. My voice can only be so big. So instead of trying to amplify my voice, I'm multiply. You know what I'm saying? And then guess what? We all going to be getting ahead. So let's go. So let's, let's slide on this Ezekiel. Because I remember you talked earlier, not even just Ezekiel Elliott. Let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott versus uh, ver Ezekiel Elliott or Dalvin Cook. If you have a preference, that's the rumor that I'm hearing out there. If you have a preference on it, you can tell me your preference. Um, but not even just Ezekiel. Talk to me about the running back position. What are your thoughts about the Dallas Cowboys, the running back position, and what they have done or have not done um, as far as the running back position? What up, what up, Ray? What up, Tommy? So the running back position for me is one going back to the whole experience and veterans. And I would have liked to see us move in this free agency. And that is a position where I feel like you need a veteran player. And I don't want to draft someone. I don't want to wait for him to come in. And then you talk about Zeke. And Zeke is another one. I'd be so split because half of me has this like, oh, my God, Zeke, come back to Dallas, baby. Come home. Let's get a ring. Let's do it this year. Like, you deserve it. We deserve it. We all deserve it. I love Zeke. Zeke was my, like, we drafted him. And I was like, yes. Like, I don't know, but I really wanted Zeke for some reason. And I just had this feeling and then we got him and everything. And it was like, so I love Zeke in that sense. And I think Zeke is a good moral person in the locker room. I think Zeke's locker room presence is very important. I think you bring in a Zeke with the CD and what he's doing. And if we can figure out how to block and get our running game going and you can get a Zeke and use him and Dowd and, you know, we could do this. But then there's also the other side of me that like Zeke, I mean, our whole running game has been a struggle. So I go back and forth and I feel like I would have liked to see someone stronger than Zeke. I don't want to, I kind of, and I hate to say this because I love Zeke so deeply. I kind of feel like we would be stuck with the Zeke. Okay. That, I feel like we would be settling and, you know, in a way. So I go back and forth. I fight myself in my head on this all the time. <laughs> my thoughts on Zeke is this, like, I feel like, First, I feel like first off and foremost, we should have never put ourselves in a situation where Zeke was our best option. And I think that is definitely the Dallas Cowboys. That's that's on us. You know what I'm saying? We it, our, our failure uh, to plan has now created an emergency. You know what I'm saying? Now, I think when you look at far as I, especially like. I just this is my thing of want a running back. I hate that no matter who you get at running back, 
it might not do much. I'm not saying it might not do anything, but it may not swing the pendulum of yeah. where you should go. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like it's almost like I always use an example. It's almost like your negative twenty dollars, right? And then you get a Zeke, and he gives you twenty dollars. You know what I'm saying? You're still broke. You just ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? You just yeah. you just don't owe. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. It is always better to be at zero than it is at negative. But at the end of the day, you still can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I think now, if you don't listen to me. If you don't have a starting center and a starting left tackle, Jesus can be your running back. Matter of fact, Jesus is going to have to be your running back because you, you're going to have so many other things that, that are going to affect how he plays. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like it's almost like, you know, it's almost like we like I told everybody no matter I, who you bring in if they can't block it. it exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know, there was a time a month ago. Well, you know, where I thought you add Zeke to this team, he might put you above. And I'm going to keep it above. If I'm Zeke, why would I want to come to the Dallas Cowboys right now? <laughs> because he's going nowhere else. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody on a one-year one deal. You don't even know if Dak going to be here next year. You don't know if CD going to be here next no. year. Your head coach is on a one-year deal. Your, 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 your defensive coordinator is on a one-year deal. Um, your offense, well, your 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 owners on a pacemaker, man. Right? Like everybody might be up here next year. You know what I'm your saying? Owners on a pacemaker. It's fine. We got Stephen Jones in the background. Oh my God, Stephen Jones and his hair. <laughs> Stephen Jones and his hair. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not even saying anything. I'm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you know, that's. I mean, I I love what you I love what you're saying about the the veteran. Oh I my gosh, it. someone said, don't worry, guys. We have little legs, Deuce Vaughn. What's your thoughts on Deuce Vaughn's? You know, I mean, he had some amazing plays and amazing runs last year. And, but I just don't, I mean, I think he's a good option to have, but he ain't nothing that. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's like a, um, He's I, he's a not not necessarily a one trick. This is my thing. Deuce Vaughn is only going to be as good as the offensive coordinator calling plays for him. That's it. Him, Kevante Turpin as well. Kevante Turpin in special teams, he can do what he want to do. He's special. Yeah. But on an offense, we saw that this year. Kevante Turpin is only as good as an offensive coordinator's willingness to use him. And they just didn't flat out want to use Kevante Turpin. Nope. You know what I'm saying? And Deuce Vaughn, I believe Deuce Vaughn, I mean, I believe he's, you know, obviously he's labeled as a running back, but he's not going to be able to do traditional running back things because of his size. You know what I'm saying? So you have to use him as like, like, because I'm going to be honest with you, whenever Deuce Vaughn is on the field for a defensive player, for me, I would always think some shady stuff about to happen. Because if, if, if you're going to run, why don't you just hand yeah. the ball to the real running back? You know what I mean? So I'm always going to think some shady stuff is going to happen. So if you are going to use him in your offense, he has to be in the game more than just when he's going to get the ball because you got to be able to hide those abilities. Now, the only way I can see him doing that is like, you know, swing passes and things like that. But when you do that, that means you're literally running plays specifically for him. And if 88 is on the field, I'm trying to get the ball to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of other guys – that I think that I would want if, if Deuce Vaughn is on the field and you got CD Lamb, you got Ferguson, um, you got uh Brandon Cooks, I would think I need Ferguson to pop off this year. Like I really need him to like all of a sudden just be a Jason Witten status. Like I see potential and I I think I kinda like his swagger a little and his attitude. I feel like he kinda has that. But I need him to pop off this year too. Who you you're a tight end? Ferguson, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody thought I was hating on Ferguson, you know what I'm saying, last year, but I wasn't hating on Ferguson. I was only saying that the kid only had 17 catches and 170 yards the year before he became the starting tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. And I just felt that you shouldn't just default players uh, starting positions in the NFL. Like, those should be things that they should have to work for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, did he prove himself? Yeah, he proved himself. He proved himself. But I was also but making not this enough point. at the same time. I need more. Yes. I'm not fully on board yet. 
Yeah, because I mean, and I, I mean, and I'm the same, and I'm the exact same way. I'm the exact same way, and because, and I'd say it's simply because of the u- the utilization of the tight end. The tight end is a position that the Dallas Cowboys use a lot. You know what I'm saying? Especially Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, I mean, the cool thing about it is this off season, you are gonna get um, John Stevens, tight end who tore his ACL in preseason. He only played like two, three games. And was wearing number 49, if I'm not mistaken. But he's a beast. We should be getting – he should be coming back. And to be honest with you, in my opinion, I was at training camp freaking 12 days last year out of the freaking 16 they was out here. And just truth be told, he actually looked like the best tight end going up and down the field, stretching the ball, stretching the field. He he actually he looked like probably the best tight end on the team. But like I said, he tore his ACL, and uh, that was the end of his season. You know what I'm saying? But okay, I think maybe they can battle it out and one of them will step it up and bowl out for us. Absolutely. Man, hey, that I mean, keep it real. The way the Cowboys run, the, the way we run our offense with the 12 personnel, we actually going to need two tight ends. We actually need two tight ends to ball out. So we're going to need him plus another one. You know what I'm saying? Plus another one. All right, so yo, man, we went over a couple subjects. We're gonna turn it over y'all to y'all for a little bit while we go through some other things. If you guys got questions, if you got questions, he somebody said once Zeke got paid big money, he didn't run hard. I'm gonna be honest with you. The the negative narrative about that, George, is this Zeke never actually got paid the big money. You wanna know why? Because the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, remember Zeke was on an extension. Zeke, the Dallas Cowboys made Zeke play all five years. So technically the first year of him supposed to get the $16 million, you know what the Cowboys did? They released him. You know what I'm saying? That's a narrative that people always have about Zeke Elliott and his contract. Um, Zeke was getting paid big money because he was a first round pick and he came in with the fourth See, overall pick. That's another problem. I don't feel like we take care of our players. I don't feel. Ooh. Steven Jones been not hear you say that because he swear by God that he take care of his players. Well, see, and that's where I need to talk to our players. I need to know how they truly feel. I need to just sit down and like, you know, because I be someone that I need to know all sides of this before I can make my conclusions. You know, so when y'all only give me so limited, then Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, what am I supposed to think? But I love you guys. I love our Cowboys. I just think we could do things a little different. (laughs) Okay, so, I mean, free agency. We just hired... We just hired tear it up. What would what are you doing differently for free agency? What I'm would you renegotiating do? contracts, so we have some damn money, and I'm locking in my players. I want. I'm locking down a CD. Dak, I you know I've been questioning if I would lock down Dak because I have you know I think it just kind of hit me the other day that Dak has been with us for like eight years, and it's kind of like. It's been eight years. You know, I feel like it is maybe that point in the relationship where you're like, hey, we've been together eight years. Are we getting married and doing this or are we just like going? You know what I mean? And I feel so I've been like trying to see Dak through. But I want to say I would lock Dak down on a contract, too. And I would have done theirs, locked down my people I want. And then I would have gone. I wanted Derrick Henry. I wanted him really bad. And. Although I've been listening to Barkley too a lot, and I really like that dude. I like where his head's at. I like his mentality. He's just a good guy. And to me, that's like means a ton because what you do on the field in the locker room, all that stuff is what comes out on the field. So Barkley, I really like too. But I would have gone after a veteran running back. Okay. That was my big move. <coughs> I would have at least reached out to Derrick Henry. My heart broke when I heard we didn't even try to holler at him. I was like, I mean, I know we got no money, but like. And, and you know, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, at right? Least you shot. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this, right? And, and, and exactly. And, and think about this. The, the, the Cowboys, since you refusing to negotiate with Dak or get a contract, the excuse of we ain't got no money will always be legitimate. So it's like, but my question is, Why don't you just do the contract so you have the money? And you know what's crazy to me? It's crazy to me that after eight years, the Cowboys are willing. And and, because you got to think in eight years, how many quarterbacks have been drafted? How many quarterbacks have come into the league that were that had more prestige than that prestige, meaning they were they were expected to do more than him. Look at the quarterbacks last year. You know what I'm saying? There was one. 
Now, my question is this. Cowboys have not ever drafted quarterbacks well. Never. We, we drafted one quarterback well. You know that was Troy Aikman. How can you mess up on the number one pick? <laughs> What's up, son? You just bust up in my house. How you doing, son? I miss you. Hey, Papa. Cowboys have never done – they've never done good drafting quarterbacks. And you know that because – think about this. The, uh, look at the other quarterbacks that you drafted. You drafted Dak Prescott in the fourth round. That was a that was a that was a godsend. So it's like, and think about this: Dak Prescott was still even when he came in. He was a third. He was a third quarterback. Kellen, you guys still felt that Kellen Moore was a better quarterback until he broke his ankle. Yeah, so, until Dak so, was so, our only choice. Yeah. So exactly. So even our evaluation of quarterbacks isn't really good. So it's like Jerry Jones. That, and I'm going to keep it real. That's why I believe, and that's why I know that uh, this push for the quarterback, close the doors, Coach, it cannot be Jerry Jones. Be it, this has to be Stephen Jones because Jerry Jones at his age knows that he is not about to live no 30, 40 more years. So father time is creeping up on him. He yeah. takes a shower every day. He see what his body looked like in the shower. Oh Lord! Listen, there's no way. There's no. No one needs. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no. Hey, hold on, real quick. Jordan, put her on her leash and take her outside. Jordan, I mean, no, Jordan. Jerry Jones knows that, so he knows Father Time is undefeated. So it's like there's no way he's he is okay with pushing this off. Keep pushing this off because man, there's never been a team with in in dealing with quarterback negotiation and quarterback situations and then they go off and win a Super Bowl. That just doesn't happen. Yeah. So it's like you're going to do one or the other. You're either going to negotiate a contract all year and then let's just think about Dak himself. The last time Dak Prescott played on a one-year deal, he broke his leg, man. You got five games out of it. That hurts so bad. That was, that was a painful day. Shoot, we, man, it's crazy because the Lakers that same day won the uh, the world championship in the bubble, <laughs> and I couldn't even. I'm a Laker fan. I could not like that. Like till to this day, well, that maybe because so right. yeah, like I was, bro. I was like when Dax when I saw like like literally like I couldn't even focus on the Lakers. Like no, I I personally didn't care. <laughs> like I or, like I was more yeah. concerned about my NFL season. You know what I'm saying? I feel. Um, that. Somebody says, why do we always have a great year but come up short the and come up short and then the next year we start all over, rebuild the next year? What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think it goes back to kind of what I was saying at the beginning. We are a great regular season team. And, but, you know, when we depend on the draft and we bring in rookies, I think that's what sets us apart to not be the championship team and where we fall short. And I think this year, the only reason we're talking rebuild, I hate that we're even saying rebuild because I feel like we still have a lot of key names and we're not losing every, I mean, right now. And we did lose a lot, but we are only talking rebuild with the Cowboys, I feel, because of the contract situation we're in and how we have no money. So that's why they're talking rebuild. And because we've lost so many people in this free agency, but I don't think our mindset is rebuild. I think right now we kind of in a barely hanging on. We'll see what they do in the draft to try and make any of this right. But my just, question is this, how much can the draft really, you know what I'm saying? Because we think about last year, the draft really didn't. Your first round pick played 16 plays a game. Your second round pick was hurt to week three. Tight end. He was probably your your second round pick is is right now probably Ferguson, Hendershot. Stevens is better than him, and Stevens is coming off recovery. For he's the fourth tight end on your team. Um, the memory, the most memorable memory is him not knowing that he had to step one more feet to get into the end zone. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know, even the cow, even like think about this, T. This mindset that all the fans are saying the Cowboys draft so well, we draft so well. Are we hanging our hips on the fact that we draft well, like guys like Micah Parsons, obvious picks and things like that? Because, like, if, and then think about this: what you doing? Okay, wipe them off. 
if we right, are there's a difference in drafting well and a we got that big name in drafting well of what our team needs Facts. and i don't know if we draft what our team needs or if we like you said we just get a big name and then see we're good in the draft because i mean a lot of people like to live off those first round picks but i'm gonna tell you guys i always say this that um first round picks are obvious talent so it's like you can't even really count obviously what you already knew you already went in here knowing that you were going to get this yeah. so how can you feel like how can you feel like a come up you know what i'm saying you can't really feel like you come up because you already got that tyron take stormy outside so she can watch the puppies i just have french eat mine just had some puppies man and they pooped everywhere and they're trying to clean them and the mom dog is going crazy right now um my boy jerry perkins my boy jerry perkins hold up a quick we do need an offensive line. I agree. We need an offensive line so we can get our running game going. Yeah, we need, and I'm gonna tell you, not even just off in the offensive line, because think about this. Theoretically, 40% of your offensive line is changing. Like 40% of, because you're gonna have a new center. Kyron, Kyron, I just said put Storm on a leash and take her outside. So do you um, think we should have tried to lock down Tyron Smith? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's gone now, but I say this. Yes, I think you shouldn't. Like, this is the thing. He played the most game. You you did all these other things in lesser seasons. You know what I'm saying? And it's like sometimes you got to pay people to avoid the hole that they're going to create by not being there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the mentality, don't quit a job until you have a job. I feel like this. I feel like you should have at least signed someone before you let Tyron Smith go. That's what I felt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe that you should have been going. I don't believe that you should have been going in and telling yourself, oh, you know, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to, you know, we're, we're just going to let Tyron Smith walk. Because think about this. You let, you told the world you were going to let Tyron Smith walk and then had to go back into free agency and look for a left tackle and he's the best option. Like, imagine if you were selling a car, right? You were selling your car on the market. And then you were like, damn, I got to sell my car, but I don't got a car now. And then you're looking on the market and you're like, damn, the best car available to buy is my car. And we you finally had him for a healthy season. Jordan, that's enough. Like, he... I know we've struggled with him and his health and injuries over the years, but like we finally had him for a healthy season. And so to come off of that and come off of a healthy season and then just let him go like that, it was like, what are we doing? I mean, even if, I mean, this, and my thing is this, like everybody else was on a one year deal. Why couldn't he just been another guy on a one year deal? And everybody's like, you know, um, that, you know, he, with the contract that he was going to get with the Jets, you know, he, he can get paid upwards of $20 million with incentives. I'm like, yeah, but think about this. If you're paying him $20 million, that means he played all 17 games and he's an all pro. Why would you yeah. have a problem with that? Why would you have a problem with that? I don't know. There's a lot of controversy over <laughs> him. And I, you know, I get the injury thing, but you have to look at the position he's playing too. That is a major position that you're gonna have injuries and if you look at his numbers and what he does on the field it over and like i said he had a healthy season so we finally got him for a healthy season and you gotta ride that and you gotta keep that going and that's where i feel like we should know that hey if we let tyron smith walk our options out there are really limited like shouldn't let that fool walk because he's the best one out there like but right. that's where it's like that's where i need to get inside of the jones's head and just know like what are we doing can we just talk about this can we just talk about some of these moves a little <laughs> Facts. You know what I'm saying? My boy Norris Mc uh, Mc Jemison says Cowboys need to admit they were wrong and move on. Um wait, yeah, they were wrong with who? I think he's talking about Tyron Smith. Are you talking about Tyron Smith? Oh. We were um, wrong, yeah. Craig's asking me, what are my thoughts on JK Dobbins, running back former in Baltimore? I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I think he just he's just got cleared off a medical injury. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't want to go through that right now. I do not want to put an, uh, I don't want to have a running back in the backfield that has an excuse. You know what Who I'm saying? The other running back there looking at the guy out of college, that he just had 
surgery too. And they're like, well, it's okay because the Cowboys, like, why are we going after players with injury? Like, and exactly. Injury. Exactly. And it's like, and the thing about this, when you do that, you basically are getting insurance for your insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have insurance. If you haven't, yeah. if your insurance needs insurance, you don't have insurance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yes, one one criteria that the and it's like if you're going to like if you're getting young players, I understand. Listen, the Cowboys have the best medical staff, blase blase. But I'm tired of re you know I, I you know I, I'm every single year we have two or three players that we have to get ready. Like we need to draft guys who are. I think that sets you back. Because if you're not ready for your first training camp, you're not prepared. You're going into the season already not natural. That's not naturally what pros do. Pros naturally go through training camp. They go through the whole exhibition of everything. So it's like you already don't have that experience. So it's like, I, 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 you know, I think for sure it's like starting a off. I want to guarantee. It's a, it's a huge gamble. It's a huge gamble. And you're gambling on a kid who has never been in this environment. Like there's too many play, there's too many kids that are gonna be drafted. They're gonna be coming out the draft. That are gonna be 100 percent healthy. That the Dallas Cowboys need yeah. to take opportunity of. Now, my boy Jamir Trish says price uh, the price tag. You know, injured players. I will say that is a you know Cowboys they love. That's an easy way to get someone at Mark Mervin's. You know what I'm saying or at Marshall's at Ross is because yeah, what? I don't want shit on sale when I'm trying to chase the ring. If I want that ring. I'm buying the nice ass ring. I ain't buying no Walmart ring and hoping that gets me through because that ain't going to last. That ain't going to get me through the season. Like, and that's where you got to spend the money. You got to not be cheap. You got it, but you got to be smart about where you spend the money. And we got to set these contracts up a little better so that they don't all expire the same year. <laughs> Facts, man. Facts. Like, who did this? Facts, like facts, like who doesn't stagger their bills? Like that's how you know the Jones have been rich too long. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Y'all ain't gotta like, worry about money like that. <laughs> they're like, yeah, you want your car note, your insurance, your health insurance, and your rent all due on the first? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but some of that stuff, yeah, yeah that, that, that's how regular people is. The Jones is like, yeah, we the Joneses don't even care what day is due. They just pay yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Regular that's folks, fine. we're like. We need to spread that out. Can I get the insurance on the 15th? Let me Can get, I get the extension on this one. <laughs> facts. And then the new date is the 29th. Let me get I'm yeah. gonna Can I get it on the 29th? <laughs> but wait, I can't pay anything right now. I need to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need it on the 29th, but I don't I get paid to the first. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um uh, Troy, what's up with you Troy saying hello? Uh he says Craig says he's bringing Zeke back simply to protect protect Zeke. I could get it. Um, Chris, Christy says, Christy, Christy says you get what you pay for. That is definitely, yeah. that's definitely that, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, but one thing about the Dallas Cowboys is, and I think it's, you know, they have actually kind of messed up the business, kind of like the business model because they have actually not been getting what they paid for because they were only paying Dak $2 million for first four, first four years. And look what that gave them. And I'm going to tell you like that, I think has actually spoiled the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Like, I think that has spo spoiled them. Like, they're now have an expectation to just find gems in the fifth round. Gems yeah. in the – you know what I'm saying? Like, they're going – they're you know what I mean? They're doing – like, and I'm going to tell you, the Cowboys mindset, look how we program too because Trey Lance – listen to me. Trey Lance was not trying to beat out Brock Purdy. Trey Lance was trying to bring out Sam Darnold. Trey Lance was the third yeah. quarterback in 49ers. And guess what? There are legitimate fans that are pushing for that. Okay, you but why did we even go after Trey Lance? Because we had, I mean, I get that, like, Cooper Rush ain't no, oh, my God, backup quarterback that if something happens to Dak, he's all of a sudden going to step in as a starting. But to me, Cooper Rush, we ain't losing. So why did we even go after Trey Lance? To be honest with you, as of right now today, I think the only person that knows is Jerry Jones. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna keep it real. I think it's gonna be one of those the, the, the Trey Lance is like it's. I think it's gonna be one of those things like the Amari Cooper trade, where it's like everybody had their their reasons on why the Cowboys traded Amari Cooper, right? But then Ooh. hindsight, you're like, yeah. But now hindsight, you're looking like no matter what the reason they thought it was, it made no sense. Because guess what? Amari Cooper would have been making twenty million dollars. CD Lamb's making eighteen. You tell me you couldn't afford that? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I love Cooper. 
Yeah, so it's like I think that you know the Trey Lance. I, as of right now, I think it was just something. I, he honestly, it might just been someone that they did that that you know. I think Jerry has players that he's adored, and when he was able to get them, he grabbed them. Now I think I I think that might have been the reasoning right then might have been just compelled out of compelling thought. Yeah, he was compelled to get them. You know what I'm saying? I just had this deep feeling. But now the question is going to be asked, what are you going to do with him? Because, bro, you got to release Cooper Rush. Like, you got to make this dude at least your second quarterback. Like, what are you doing? He's the highest paid third. Listen, you have a, listen to this. And this is what's so crazy about this situation, right? The Dallas Cowboys don't want to pay nobody. But they're paying their, back, their third string quarterback more than their second string quarterback who's not even playing. How does that work? And when you're America's team, like, come on, you gotta be smarter than this. You gotta be America's team in all aspects. You can't be cheap. When we're the biggest, most profitable sports organization and team, get out of here. You can't be cheap with your players. That's where I get like, you, t you know what I mean? Especially when your players are the ones playing for you. That's who you take care of more than anything. You know, because I think back when I was a boss and I was managing a team at my job and I took care of them because the more I took care of them and poured into them and made sure like they knew, like I'm doing everything to financially take care of you emotionally. I'm there for support. All this, like the harder they worked for me, the more they wanted to be there, the more like they stayed there instead of taking promotions just to stay under my team. And it's like, Jerry, that's what you got to learn with your players. You know, you can't be this Jerry Jones, big feed my ego. You got to take care of these people taking care of you because they're the ones putting all this money in your pocket, Jerry. Like, so that's yeah. where I get a little, I wish the Cowboys were not so cheap. Yeah. And I'm going I'm to tell y'all, man, we keep putting it on Jerry, but I, I really believe a lot of this is Stephen Jones. I believe this, a lot of this is Stephen Jones and his hair. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> listen to me. Stephen Jones. Oh, damn hair. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. I don't trust that mother effort's hair, bro. I and then, <laughs> and then number two, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> Let me tell you, the number two thing about Stephen Jones that's, that always scares me. Stephen Jones is a billionaire who wears the same three suits. That's a mean mother effort, bro. He got that gray joint. He got that dark blue joint. And then he got that that blue, blue joint that they all be wearing. Stephen Jones, he don't even spend money on himself. I promise you. I promise you he drive electric. <laughs> like, like Stephen Jones is a penny pinching dude. He don't wash. He rents his car off. He don't wash his car, bro. <laughs> he rent. He drive his car through the sprinkler, bro. Like, like that's what Stephen Jones is on, bro. I'm telling you that I'm telling you, it's I Steven, know. man. We need a little organizational revamp, I feel like. Facts. Well, hey man, we've been on here for an hour. We have given you guys some cowboy content. We have lied. We have lied. We have laughed. We have <laughs> cried. <laughs> we have dis we have disnounced some lies. We have lied. We have laughed. We have cried. We've had moments, we've shared, we've huddled, we've done everything, man. And it's at that time, man, for us to get up out of here. But, hey, man, before we get up out of here, I need everybody right now who's watching. Someone to go said on. Jerry Jones shops the Dollar General store with coupons. Facts. <laughs> and then, can, and then, can, and then, hey, listen, and then he complains when the computer, when the coupon don't swipe. <laughs> no, I need that 30 cents off. Come on. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> It's gonna go. Here's my stack of coupons. For real, got twelve people in line. You know what I'm saying? But T, let them know where they can. I need. This is what I need. This is what I need. This is what I need. I need y'all to show her some love. And she's gonna let you guys know where to follow her on YouTube. She's gonna let you guys know where to follow her on Instagram and on Facebook. I need you guys to follow her on her social platform, and then I need you to follow her on Instagram. After you hit that follow button. Send her a screenshot. Send her a screenshot of you follow her. What she's going to do is she's going to send those screenshots to me and I'm going to post those on my page and I'm going to show all those folks some love who went out there and show some love, man, because we, we working on a mountain right here, man. And this is the first little step. And you want to make sure you're a part 
of this first step. A lot of you guys were not a part of my beginnings, but guess what? You can be a part of T's beginnings. You know what I'm saying? So tear, uh, tear it up. Let them know where they can find you at on Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, and YouTube, Twitter for all the twiggers out there. And now known as X. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only X site you can you can watch with your pants on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, but you know you got X and you got YouTube. Let them know where they can follow you at. And uh, where they can tap in, once you tap in with her, hit that screenshot, send it over to her Instagram, and then um, I'll show you guys some love on the back end. Yes, thank you. And thank you for having me. This was so fun. I literally could talk Cowboys all day. So you can find me on Instagram. It is the same name as this, Tearing It Up Cowboys. Same with YouTube. I just made a Twitter or an X. Um, Facebook, they're all Tearing It Up Cowboys. And yeah, that's what, and I so I have TikTok too, but I didn't link my link my TikTok to this, but I do have TikTok, and it's just tearing it up 2.0 on TikTok. Yeah, and hey man, you guys already know where to find me at. Make let her go, let her go. I'll, I'll do it. And you guys already know where to find me at, man. It's your boy West Coast, man. It has been an absolutely pleasure. This was not a guest appearance. This was a pilot show. And I'm going to be honest with you. I definitely know we're going to get funding. So we definitely going to be on here. If not anything, we're going to be on here at least on. So maybe we can stamp it in on Fridays, every Friday at 11. And then see if we can grow from there. You know what I'm saying? Um, make sure you go over to her platforms. Make sure you give her a like and a follow. Let her know that West Coast Center. And um, you guys already know what it is, man. Never look down because stars up. Peace.